Glad you could join us. Now, the National House of Chiefs is urging persons in charge of next week's referendum um, to carry out their measures, I mean the referendum for creation of new measures, of new regions, to ensure peaceful conduct of the process. Now, voters in the six proposed regions cast their ballots on the 27th of this month to determine whether or not they want to be autonomous. President of the National House of Chiefs, Togbia Pede, the 14th, says the outcome must be acceptable to all stakeholders. He was addressing me in, uh, members at a meeting in Kumase. Prince Apia has more in this report. It was the fourth general meeting for members of the National House of Chiefs. Among the many issues discussed was the upcoming referendum. President of the National House of Chiefs, Togbi Afede the 14th, says all stakeholders must ensure the outcome of the referendum is acceptable to all. The peace of this country is more important than the creation or non-creation of new regions. Therefore, we all must play the roles that we have to play to make sure that uh, the process passes peacefully and so that the outcomes become acceptable to all so we can continue to enjoy the peace we enjoy in our country. We also want to call on the Electoral Commission to perform its role as fairly as possible. Let us put our premium on the peace. Meanwhile, about 3,000 personnel of the Nation Builders Corps are to be posted to Regional Secretariat of the House of Chiefs. Chieftaincy and Culture Minister Kofi Jamesi says the move will enhance work at the Ministry and the Traditional Councils. There are so many traditional councils who do not have the personnel to work in those traditional councils. So it is a challenge. But as I speak to you, we have written to the NAPCO Secretariat to release to us personnel who will be posting to the various traditional councils and the various House of Chiefs. We have been promised that 3,000 of those NAPCO personnel will be posted to the ministry. And the posting will go like this. Recruited from the various regions and posted within the regions. The House of Chiefs has also revealed plans to digitize its operations. Chinese Ambassador His Excellency Xing Ting Wang says his country is ready to support Ghana in our industrialization initiatives. We would like to support your policy like Ghana Beyond Aid, one factory, one, dist one district, one factory. So I believe that, you know, China now, China and Ghana, we are facing the, a lot of opportunities. We would like to work together and should take the other advantage of the good momentum of the development of bilateral relations. The Chinese ambassador donated 10 desktop computers, two laptop computers and other accessories together with 20,000 cities to support the capacity building of human resources at the National House of Chiefs. Prince Apia, reporting. Now, the Electoral Commission has inaugurated a nine-member committee to fashion out the implementation of the Representation of People's Amendment Act, ROPA. According to EC Chairperson in Jean Mentor, the committee chaired by Deputy EC Chair Dr. Eric Bosmanasari is to engage political parties, civil society, as well as the citizenry to fashion out clear guidelines for the implementation of ROPA. She further charged the committee members comprising reps from political parties and civil society groups to submit their reports to the commission by end of May 2019. My colleague, Kwesi Parker Wilson, joins me via telephone for more on this. Uh, Parker, what has brought this about? Don't come again. I didn't hear that. I am asking what occasioned this announcement by the EC chair. Hello? 
Right, Parker, if you can hear me, um, what occasion this announcement? Has the EC Chair given any deadlines or any timelines for uh, the committee to finish its work? Yes, the EC has given timelines and, of course, terms of reference for members of the committee. Now, they're supposed to submit their report by end of May 2019. So, if you do the calculation, probably they have about six clear months to finish with their uh, consultation and, of course, a meeting with stakeholders who are interested in the implementation of the rope. Now, then I'll permit me to run you through members of the committee. Dr. Eric Bosman Osai will chair the committee, and of course, he's the deputy chair of the Electoral Commission. Ms. Adra Abipa Esuma is also a member of the committee. Mr. Christian Ousupari, he is the secretary to the committee. And the MPP has a representative, that is the General Secretary, John Bodo. Benjamin Kumbo is representing the NDC on the, uh, the, the, the committee. Dr. Kojo Asante of CDD and Ransford Jampo of University of Ghana also represented the academic world on the committee. Then finally, Reverend Dr. N. Edu Jensi of National Peace Council. Now, something interesting happened at the uh, inauguration because the minority parties were raising concerns. The Electoral Commission has directed them to come together and nominate an individual for uh, to, to represent them on the committee and the minority parties, and I'm, I'm referring to the CPP, the PNC, the APC, and, and the others, they think that that is a clear disrespect because, one, the EC failed to even communicate to them. And so they are just hearing those for the first time. And I want to make reference to the director, the general secretary, the acting general secretary of the CPP, that is Governor Bonfair, probably known as Kabila. He was raising that concern, but the EC came out to explain to them that the decision has already been taken. The last IPAC meeting they held, the decision was taken, and that uh, the minority parties are well aware that they need to come together right. and nominate one person to represent them, their interests on the committee. So uh, these are the issues that, are, that, are, that, that, that took place here at the Electoral Commission, where nine member committee was inaugurated to, of course, fashion out the implementation of ROBA. Thank you, Parker Wilson, for that report. You're still watching. Join you today with me. Um, Daniel Dazin. Now, the majority in Parliament is disputing claims by the minority that the property government planned to buy for an embassy in Oslo cost $3.5 million in 2017. Minority spokesperson on Foreign Affairs Samuel Okujeto Ablakwa had claimed the property was inflated by $8.5 million US dollars because the current owner bought it for $3.5 million in 2017 and was selling it to government for $12.5 million. Addressing a media briefing in Parliament House, Vice Chairman of the Foreign Affairs Committee, Sapon Aprechum, claimed the property was actually valued in 2016 for $11.5 million. Chairman of the committee, Frank Anodompre, accused Mr. Ablakwa of acting against the interest of Parliament. He says... Mr. Blackwa has been leaking sensitive information from the committee on social media and this will make it difficult for them to work with him. He says Mr. Blackwa has been acting mischievously, adding uh, they will manage him in his words. Joseph Opoku Gakpo joins me uh, via telephone with more. Gakpo, did the majority present any evidence to back their claims of the $11.5 million valuation in 2017? Uh, no, they actually didn't. We asked for that, and the response they gave is that that's what the architects have indicated. In fact, the vice chairman of the committee, um, Ampetung Sapong, explained that uh, the minority is confusing two separate properties. He claims that um, on that uh, you know, specifically at that same address, there's a 15 bedroom structure and then a six bedroom structure. One of them is being converted into a chancery and the other is being converted to what he described as a residence for the ambassador. He says that the bid in terms of them was that government should take the six bedroom structure for two point two million dollars. That is the fifteen bedroom structure which is a separate one. That's one for the fifteen million. And he goes on to say that uh, it's because the minority is contributing both structures and that the reference that Mr. Blanco made to the 4.5 billion amount is actually in reference to the 15 room structure and not to the six bedroom structure, which is actually $2.2 million, which he says is creating the confusion in the minds of the minority. So, but he's insisting right. that 
the structure that was supposed to be converted into a chantry was actually valued at 11 million as a last year. Now, Gapo, this did not start from the minority in parliament. It actually started from the media in Norway. And after this particular publication from a Norwegian media house, the foreign ministry said that they discontinued the move on the 12th of December. However, there is evidence to suggest that work was continuing there as of the 14th of December. Did the majority address this? I do that question again to the vice chairman of the committee, Sir um, Pon um, Ampletu. And he's claiming that the third renovation was actually ongoing before government even began a conversation with the lawyers of the property owners to buy it, and that the renovation is not being done at the behest of the Ghana government. He said. Um, we also specifically asked uh, the specific evidence of the uh, indication that the government has uh, given to um, the team in Norway that they should continue the processes to apply this property. And his reaction is that um, this is something that the foreign minister has called the Ghana representative in Oslo that they should go ahead and indicate to the property owners that government is very interested in acquiring it anymore. So though Britain letter has gone out, no official communication has gone out, it was just a call to the representative in Oslo. Did they give any indication that they will revise the estimates for the purchase of the chancery that they sent to Parliament? Did they give any indication that that figure of $16 million will now go down? And they indicate that uh, there's a process that they go through when they need to apply some of their property. And that this was actually just the third phase of the process, which is getting um, a quote in terms of the highest possible amount. They would now have to do value for money or to come to a conclusion uh, on, on what exactly needs to be done. And so, uh, depending the pieces of the Gakpo, if you, if you can but hear me, through, right. And that it's a lower figure, uh, so go ahead and communicate that after properly. So uh, we missed you for a moment there, but the point you raised was that um, this is just a stage in the procurement process, and they will go ahead and look for a cheaper property. If they find one that uh, it costs less, they will buy it. Uh, so he says uh, the conversation is still ongoing as to whether they should even buy a property or they probably could rent. Um, a different property instead of buying, but then that's all the decisions that to and uh, go through the necessary procurement procedures here in Ghana with the required value for money for it all allowed. Now, so finally, go ahead and do that. finally, on this subject, Joseph, the chairman of the committee, Frank Anod Dompre, who is an NPP MP, has expressed in the past. Uh, that this deal is, does not satisfy him in terms of the value for money questions that have been raised. On several occasions, he has agreed with Mr. Okujeta Blakwa. He seems to be beating a retreat. Did he explain why? Uh, well, he says he's not beating a retreat. He indicates that earlier the committee had concerns about the process, which is why the minister seeking clarity and demanding answers. And since the minister to make those details, they are clearing their minds on how the process uh, needs to be done going forward, which is why he's attacking it. But uh, he's insisting he's not being a retreat. He's always held the position that other things like money, money audits need to be done. And so those are just the things that we are going through now. Thank you, Joseph Opoku Gapo, for that. You're still watching Join News today with me, Daniel Dazin. Now, the Ghana Integrity Initiative has described as inappropriate President Ekufado's reaction to criticisms of some of his policies. President Ekufadu, in reaction to a question at the media encounter, described backlash from the opposition and think tanks as sometimes containing little substance. But speaking on News Desk earlier, Programs Director for the Ghana Integrity Initiative disagreed. I wouldn't fault the President for perceiving that our criticism uh, is, 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 is an attack because mm -hmm. I mean, we, somebody may see the glass as uh, half full, uh, and others may see it as half empty. But, but the most important affect... thing is the substance mm. of the criticism. It is not the attack. So, because so, let me sorry, just quickly sorry. end here. Okay, sure. and, and You see, because a very important piece of legislation, as the Whistleblowers Act says, that the Section 1 says that 
a person may make disclosure of information where the person has reasonable cause to believe that the information tends to show an economic crime has been committed, is about to be committed, or is likely to be committed. This is a charge that the law places on citizens. Okay. For many who are saying that the time is not enough, it is simply because these things are not happening regular enough. So that if we had had a regular encounters with the various sectors, because you see, you realize that the questions are sector related. Mm, but but there's so always, but there's meet the press occasionally. Yeah, well, you know, but we should, you see, the thing is that we should standardize it, we should probably institutionalize it and make it more frequent. So you know that probably every fortnight, every week, mm. there is a set, there, there would be some engagement with a particular sector. I mean, so the uh, the issue of the uh, what do you call it the Os is it the Oslo, Oslo building? So the, the the minister quickly organizes an engagement with the media, explain mm. issues to them, break the issues, probably give us uh, the media some documentary proof. You understand to either disbunk the allegation that mm. has been made or lay bare the the mere fact. We wouldn't then be inundating the president with all the questions that ordinarily should be responded to by the sector uh, appointees. Mm. Minister for Information Kojo Opon Kroma also said on the same platform, the president answered the questions in a manner he deemed fit. I think that's an opinion they're entitled to. Mm. They don't think that the president's response was satisfactory. As in, in their opinion, mm. the president didn't answer their criticism satisfactorily. And it's an opinion they have which we can't begrudge them for. There are other people who don't exactly share that opinion, who think that the president's uh, response was satisfactory. Indeed, they have made the point that they hold a view that a number of issues have come up and they want it handled in a particular way. And I think the president has responded to a specific question as to whether or not he will set up a full-scale probe on a particular matter, that is the Oslo matter. Mm -hmm. The president gave the minister an opportunity to give the initial factual response to that one. And then the president proceeded to make the point that when you make an allegation, there must be some prima facie basis upon which we set up a full commission of inquiry or a full probe. In the absence of that, we're not going to be chasing every allegation that flies, because if we do, we'll spend mm -hmm. the rest of the time just chasing allegations. Meanwhile, President of the Ghana Journalist Association, Roland Afel Money, is assessing, in assessing the President's media encounter, said their collaboration with the Presidency made the organization less chaotic. Yesterday's event um, uh, has its pluses and minuses. Uh, one big plus was that uh, it reflected orderliness. Um, I did clear departure from previous events. Um, which um, uh, was chaotic in certain aspects when it comes to, especially over uh, question time, see people scrambling to raise their hands, scrambling to cut their attention of whoever will call them. People queuing up even when they had they had not been called. Mm -hmm. um, the, the chaotic spectacle was missing continuously from yesterday's event. So that was, in terms of orderliness, uh, at least. The, okay, uh, 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 Mr. Money. Certain specific areas we identify, like the economy, like politics, like sports, like the environment, like agri and all that. And the and they started with uh, the economy. Started with the economy, and uh, unfortunately, um, other sectors didn't have the opportunity to be featured. Away from that story, some chiefs, kingmakers, family heads, elders, and members of the five divisions of Manya Krobo. Um, are demonstrating against the corner of Manya Nene Sakite II for what they describe as continuous confusion and litigation over individual and family lands. The protesters are also accusing the corner of hiring the services of some Kuwaitis to exhume the remains of their ancestors buried in the heart of the Krobo Mountains in search of gold. Human bones, bottles, beads, and other precious metals used to bury their ancestors. Maxwell Kudako is following the demonstrators, as shown on your screen, at Odumasi. He joins us for updates. Uh, Maxwell, these seem to be very serious allegations the persons are making. Uh, what else have they been saying? Well, indeed, sir, these are serious allegations. The allegations 
as you mentioned, I continue in a petition addressed to the President of the Republic of Ghana, and it is signed by about 34 uh, heads of uh, family, elders, and some sub and teammates of some five divisions within the Menya Kobo area. They said, among other things, that the corner of Menya Kobo uh, is leading like a dictator, creating division and confusion among the other divisional chiefs in the area. They allege that Colonel, the colonel has uh, by himself installed other sub chiefs which he's not responsible for installing, creating chief static disputes among some divisions. They also allege that the colonel has also uh, connived with some Kuwaitans and they've invaded the Kobo Mountains. That's supposed to be an, an, an ancestral home for their ancestors. And they have assumed some bones and taking some gold that were used to bury their ancestors. The, the chiefs are, are also saying that the president needs to step in and ensure that there's peace and order in the area. They have also a, a, accused the corner that the only mining uh, area in the Kobo area, that is a limestone deposit that is being mined by Gassim, uh, they, they, they claim that the citizens are not benefiting from this uh, um, uh, huge uh, investment, and that the colonel solely has been uh, taking royalties from the company, and he are, he's not creating employment. Most importantly, they are concerned about the rate at which the colonel is uh, automatically taking lands that does not belong to him, but rather belongs to families and clans. They say that if the security agencies do not come in, there will be a time that chaos will break in the committee. So they are calling on authorities, especially the security agencies, the municipal executives, and the president to call the chiefs to order. Other than that, uh, they will uh, use all other means to resist the colonel from taking what rightfully belongs to them. Now, we understand this demonstration has been going on for a while, and it's not today the agitations began. Maxwell, have we heard from Colonel? Uh, personally, I have tried the corner severally, but he's not big. Other things we do, the demonstration has not ended. They started from the Pond Lorry Station, and they, they, they've been walking through the principal street of Pond through to Odumasi to Atua. So now they are now returning from Atua. They're working to um, uh, a, a, a town called uh, New London or something of the sort. There's a town after Atua. So we are, wait, we are waiting for them at the municipal assembly where they will present the petition to the municipal chief executive to before the, the president. Mm -hmm. There are uh, armed police officers here to make sure that the peace and order right after the presentation of the petition we will visit or will go to the corner's palace and make effort to, 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 to speak with him and also get his reaction about the allegations leveled against him. Thanks. Max Okudeko, he's a man in the eastern region. Uh, we'll be bringing you the details of that demonstration in later bulletins. Now, a medical practitioner is drawing attention to neglected medical conditions most prevalent in, the un in underserved communities. Dr. Ernest Kwaku um, observes even local pharmaceutical outlets have stopped stocking drugs and meant to treat or manage such conditions. He spoke as an outreach as part of the 14th African Regional Meeting of the International Federation of Medical Students Associations at Atremade in Ashanti region. The Student Federation collaborated with the Philia Heart Foundation on the outreach. It was targeted as screening and treating people in communities plagued with diseases considered no more prevalent in the cities. Hair lice and ringworm infestation were found to be common in the community. Oftentimes, uh, when we think that some disease conditions don't exist any longer, it is because we haven't looked hard enough. Today we are here and we have realized that head lice still exist and they are present in our hard to reach and underserved communities. It is because we dare to look, it's because we dare to screen, it's because we dare to treat. That's how we found it, active case finding, and we found it. Dr. Kwako urged government to implement the rule incentive affirmative action for health personnel policy. He stressed it will entice more professionals to rural areas. It's been too long. Minister, uh, minister after minister has not been able to implement it. I think it is time to ask that maybe even the vice presidency should be interested and actually make it a governance policy 
that there should be rural incentive affirmative action package for health personnel. This will definitely attract doctors and nurses to underserved areas. The meeting brings together medical students from across the continent to discuss pertinent health issues of the world. The theme for this year is rural and remote health care, increasing quality and accessibility to reach everyone everywhere. Kennedy Ngasso is Federation President. Well, the theme was actually chosen bearing in mind that rural health is one of the major challenges that we as Africans face. Now, the WHO, having realized that with regards to health care, some of the major problems that we face are, one, the access to health care in itself, and then, two, the delay in uh, giving health care at the health facilities, and then, three, any other problems that could be associated with these uh, people seeking health care. Reporting for Joy News, Kwesi We stay with health. A short code, star 929 hash, across mobile networks. That's how subscribers of the National Health Insurance Scheme can renew their insurance from the comfort of their homes as the NHIA introduces mobile renewals. The National Health Insurance Authority is marking its 15th anniversary this year and as part of the celebrations nationwide, the Upper East Regional Scheme organized a health walk in Bogatanga which was also used to announce the introduction of mobile renewal to the general public. You know, we've done the pilot at uh, Esojeman and then uh, West Mampusi. Uh, but as we've launched today, it becomes operational today across the whole country, not only Bolga. When you, you dial the short code, uh, star 929 uh, hash, it will, it will give you uh, our services. It will pop up, there will be a pop up that will show our services, whether you want to renew. It will tell you our benefit package. It will tell you the medicines list. But the point of emphasis now is on the renewal. So when you go to the renewal, it will give you, it will show you the fields, and then you renew. But um, what is required is that you must know the last time the district that you registered, because you are going to use the last time registration premium to do your renewal, and the premiums vary from district and from regions to regions. Probably Bolga here, uh, we are doing it at uh, 22. But in other districts, probably in the south, it could be more than that. So you now have to know whether the last time you register around here, which movies around the 22, or somewhere down south where at times it's more than the 22. Now, in a bid to ensure the safety of Ghanaians on our roads, the Multimedia Group and Guinness Ghana Brewers Limited have signed a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, on a road safety campaign for the next three years. Managing Director of the Guinness Ghana Limited, Gavin Pike, spoke to Joy News after a short ceremony to kickstart the, pro the project. Uh, this partnership, which we're launching today, as a leading beverage alcohol producer and total beverage producer in Ghana, we believe that Guinness Ghana Breweries PLC has a critical role to play in shaping responsible consumption of alcohol. It's part of our sustainability and responsibility initiatives as a, as a good corporate citizen in this country um, and all in service of our purpose of celebrating life every day, everywhere. So it's really fantastic that we're able to strengthen our program, Troquanamum, which is our Don't Drink and Drive campaign, which has been running through the last five years through this multimedia partnership. It's really exciting to uh, strengthen and formalize the arrangement which we've had with Joy FM and the multimedia group over this three-year commitment. We know that what we're able to do on the ground supporting the MTDD, the National Road Safety Commission, is part of what we can accomplish. Um, but taking that message out more broadly through the biggest um, you know, media platform in the country and the multimedia group really just brings greater awareness and a greater commitment um, and shows our commitment uh, to, you know, to our role of creating a positive role for alcohol in society and reducing the harmful use of alcohol, particularly in the form of drinking and driving. Now, Chief Operations Officer in charge of radio and digital media, 
the multimedia group Ken Ansa commended GGBL and was hopeful that in the next three years, road carnage on our roads will be curbed. I think there is so much that we've been doing over the years in making sure, especially around these times of the year, that uh, people arrive home safely. Joy um, used to have a program called Arrive Alive. And the whole intention of it was to make sure that um, pedestrians, drivers, and every road user exercises care and caution in, in, in everyday uh, duty. But I think this is taking it many steps higher, especially in the times we are in and, and what we see around us every day. And for GGBL to take this initiative, which we see as a huge one, um, financially, every resource being thrown into it, um, we say kudos to GGBL. And we say kudos also to all the partners who have come on board, the MTTD and all other partners who have come on board to make this um, um, a success. We believe that three years is a long time to make a huge difference. There is so much we can do in three years. There is so much we can change in terms of attitude, in terms of uh, driver attitude, pedestrian attitude, influence overall into policy and other things that come together to make our roads safer. Still watching Joy News today with me, Daniel Dazin. Now, coming up, Executive Chairman of the State Enterprises Commission, Stephen Asamwa Boating, has charged state and subverted agencies to ensure that the state gets returns on investments made into their operations. Daryl Kwa will bring you the details in business. <laughs>